everybody. Welcome to the Moldy Creation Show. This is going to be my first episode, and I felt that uh, there would be no better place to start uh, doing tutorials than to show you how to make these amazing Moldy Creations eyeballs. So there's lots of different ways that uh, people have been doing eyeballs over the years, and when I first started getting into this, I looked at all the tutorials, and I just felt like it was either too many steps or it just didn't look realistic enough so I had to kind of get into it myself and figure out what was the best process to make the most realistic looking eyes first I started hand painting them but I didn't care for the way those turned out and then I turned to this method and I haven't looked back since so if you want to learn how to make interesting looking uh, eyeballs realistic eyeballs for your creations stay tuned so to begin with, let's talk about some materials you're going to need. I like to use tin foil, and then you're going to need some glass kabochins, which I'll put that in the description, spelling. Uh, I prefer to use 16 millimeter, which is like these guys. So the first thing you're going to have to do is create your eyes on your computer using something like Photoshop or what I use is GIMP, which is actually a free Photoshop uh, tool that you can download from Google or whatever. It's, it's been around for a very long time. It's always been a very high quality program. I've used it for so many different things throughout the years. And uh, yeah, it, I really recommend getting GIMP uh, if you don't want to shell out any money for some kind of professional high grade Photoshop program, which is really unnecessary for this. But uh, so uh, all the eyes that you're gonna see um, that I'm gonna show you guys uh, were designed by me using Photoshop uh, on my computer and then resizing them to the right size so that when I print them out, they fit the glass kabochins perfectly. And you can see here, these are all the different eye colors and styles and stuff that I've come up with uh, for, my, for my products. Um, I even have more than this even, but this is, uh, this is what we're going to start with. So I'm going to go ahead and print out one of those pages and then we'll see what that looks like. All right, so here's a sheet of eyeballs I just printed up and I'm going to go ahead and show you now how to glue them together and make sure that you get a lot of good shine uh, when you lay your glass kabochins on top of the eyeballs, you'll notice that they magnify the image so that it's going to blow it up and make it look a little bit more realistic. Um, and if you don't glue these down correctly, you're gonna get a shine coming through that will be more like a glare, it won't look correct. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to avoid all that. I suggest ordering yourself a pack of these foam brushes. They, uh, I use these things for absolutely everything when, I, when it comes to using the epoxy that I'm going to be using. Um, because they are disposable and they're cheap. Uh, get them on Amazon. Uh, I'll try and put some affiliate links in my description for the products that I'm using because uh, almost everything that I use is from Amazon, almost. Um, but anyways, this is going to be our foam application brush for applying our epoxy. So here we have the epoxy that I like to use. You can see it's called Envirotex Light. Uh, technically, <clears throat> this material is a bar top finisher, so if you were going to resurface a bar, you would use something like this to make it ultra shiny and resistant to damage. Uh, it was one of the first products that I kind of came across when I was looking for something to gloss my products with at the hardware store, and that's exactly where I get it, local hardware store, but it's also available on Amazon. Um, and ever since I started using this stuff, I have not looked back. It works so well. Um, it takes about 24 hours for it to fully dry so that it's not tacky. And that is enough time for it to really ooze into all the cracks and crevices of something that you've made uh, to get the most coverage. Uh, sometimes you might need to do two applications to get a real good coverage because as it dries it it kind of separates in some areas you'll notice you might have some dead spots that aren't shiny so you just might have to do another coat um, but the the way that i mix it up it's equal portions of a and b and i really just i just eyeball it at this point uh, i've been doing this for three years and uh i don't know what how much i need but you know you just have to mess around with it but basically we're just going to pour both parts at the same time into my dedicated uh mixer here and 
It does have a odor to it, but it's never made me nauseous or ill, but some people are more sensitive to it than others. Definitely do it in a well-ventilated area. You can't tell, but I've got a window right in front of me here. It's wide open and there's fresh breeze coming in. So if you were gonna do this, definitely do it in a well-ventilated area. You don't wanna do it in a stagnant room or it's gonna smell really bad. It might make you feel really sick. All right, looks nice and mixed up. You can see it's very uh, liquidy, liquid state, pretty runny, not too thick. Now that that's all mixed up, I'm gonna go ahead and take a piece of tin foil. Lay out your tin foil on a really smooth, really flat surface, and uh, you'll see that there's a lot of lines and the little bumps and stuff that come from the factory. You're gonna to wanna to smooth all that out, so I always take something simple, bottle cap, whatever, and just start smoothing out all those wrinkles and bumps. <clears throat> If you try and do this on top of a surface that isn't totally smooth and flat, you're just going to end up tearing the foil. So if you do it on top of a piece of glass, or I have a big piece of acrylic I'm using, it works really well. It's flat. Now all these little creases and all these little bumps, otherwise they're going to show through on our eyeballs a little bit. Alright, that looks pretty good. Take our eyeball paper and start on the back side, face down on the foil. <clears throat> Grab your foam brush and our fresh epoxy mix. And I'm just going to start applying this generously to the back of the paper. And I'm just going to cover almost the whole paper. Of course, I'm targeting the eyeballs themselves to uh, make sure that the back side of all the eyeballs is very sticky and sticks to the tin foil perfectly. And it does take a generous amount of the product of the epoxy to get uh, the coverage I'm looking for. And you'll see after I put it on here as it starts to kind of sort, soak into the paper that you can see the eyeballs start showing through and that's how you know you've got enough on there, good coverage. Okay, now that the back side is fully saturated and you can see through it really well, we're going to go ahead and lay that flat on the tin foil, right in the center. Just like that. Go ahead and use your hands and smooth it out. Time to cover the front side with the rest of the epoxy. Again, putting it on nice and generous, but you don't want it to have pools. You want it to be smooth, but it will take a, quite a bit of a epoxy to cover it all. Now comes the kabochins. And I'm just going to pick these up one at a time and drop them right on top of each eyeball. Now just putting them on here to begin with and I'll go back after I've got them all on here to uh, make sure they're flattened out nice and evenly and that they're centered and that there's no air bubbles because that is the worst. As you can tell, I did skip a few rows, but that's because I already have uh, a bunch of those eyeballs ready to go. Um, so I'm, not, I'm only making the ones that I'm low on. Now that I have laid all the glass kabochins down on top of the eyes, I'm going to go back and I'm going to be pushing down on them because I can see that there's air bubbles trapped behind the glass and that will push out those air bubbles. Sometimes you kind of got to wiggle it a little bit as you're pressing down on it to get those uh, air bubbles out. And it's 
really important that you get them out because when this is uh, finished drying, you will see all that stuff sitting back there and it won't be looking pretty. All right, so now I'm all done pushing all those down. As you can see here, they look uh, much better, much more realistic already. Double check for air bubbles, go back and uh, push those down real hard to get those out. Looking good. So, this does take, like I said, about 24 hours to dry, so you're going to want to set it somewhere where it's going to be totally flat. Uh, otherwise, because these are basically floating on top of a layer of epoxy, they will slide, they will move, they will um, float. So. You're going to want to keep an eye on them. I check them every couple hours, and once in a while I will find a couple that have slid off the image, and uh, I readjust those so that they dry properly. Um, but yeah, so once this is all dry, then I can start cutting them out and put them in my, uh, my eyeball holders. And you can see what that looks like. Here's one of my containers of eyeballs. This is my monster green eye. So far, just a one-man show. For the past three years, I've been doing this basically alone uh, with a little bit of help from my wife now and then when things get really busy. Um, you may have seen some of the stuff that I've made on Netflix on the show Disjointed. They featured one of the bongs that I made and uh, also made a phone case for Miley Cyrus uh, about two years ago. And uh, there's been a few other really cool, exciting things that have happened, a couple of local articles about me. And so basically what this is about is I want to share my knowledge with the rest of you. I want you guys to know what I know so that you can make better projects and that you can make amazing, stunning, realistic art, whatever you're you're going for. Um, and so the whole purpose of this channel is basically to educate and to pass on the things that I have essentially figured out for myself. A couple things I've learned from watching uh, some tutorials, but almost all of it I've been just figuring it out as I go for the last couple years. Um, so yeah, I hope that you guys enjoy the content, and uh, I'm going to maybe hopefully try and make one of these videos uh, once a week, so uh, make sure to follow, subscribe, all that good stuff, and check out the Instagram at moldy.creations. So yeah, that's about it for this uh, first episode. Thank you all for uh, checking it out and um, listening to what I have to say, and in the future I will show you uh, some of the ways that I make all the awesome products that I've been making for the last couple of years. I'll be walking you guys through how to make the water pipes, the phone cases, uh, pretty much anything, you know. And if you order something from my website, multicreations.com, you just might be able to watch me make it right here on, uh, on my channel. So thanks, guys, and uh, hope to see you again.